beast we met earlier. I'm here with my friend Swiney. Say hi, Swiney. Also, I'm wearing my hat indoors. My dear sainted mother always taught me that it was polite to remove your hat when you're indoors, but I lost me good right eye and the top of my head in the same engagement in the South China Sea. Ever since then, I rarely removed my hat. So I'm going to leave it on through the reading. I want you to meet my friends. This is Martha Bear. Notice Martha Bear has no eyes. Martha Bear has no eyes because she sees with her heart. This is her friend and advisor. This is Airborne. Airborne keeps her in informed about such things as need to be known. This here is Winky Bear. And Winky Bear, if you'll notice, when he bows back and forth, that he will wink at you. Clever fellow. And then we have up here Teddyo. Teddyo is is this sprightly young man that comes from Oklahoma City. He can get in all kinds of trouble, so he visits. This is me ship, the Rosie Freckle. Ah, it's my pride right here. Notice it's it's anchored off the tip of the Bay Island, Florida. And above me here is a picture of the gracious Jane Marie, the author of this tale I'm going to read you, that includes all of these characters and the reason for their introduction. So, sit back, Relax and listen to the tale of the great Amelia Island Sniffoff by Jane Marie Malcolm. I have to put on respects. I lost a bit of my eye, remember. Ah, Martha Bear was explaining to Airborne, her grasshopper advisor. Jane Marie has been busy planning the annual Amelia Island Sniffoff flower contest, so I know her sister Nancy's arrival will be a most wonderful surprise. It's such an honor that our courtyard garden was chosen as a locale for this year's rose growing contest. Do you think the baby pink rose I've entered is my best effort? Airborne left her shoulder to land on a table that held glass jars and vases displaying the recently delivered flower entries. Yes, a wise choice indeed. Just then, Bird let out a loud squawk, announcing guests at the gate. Jane Marie came around the corner and was the first to reach the front door. This was just not any guest. This was family. Nancy had arrived. Squeals of delight echoed throughout Martha Manor as the sisters held tight together. Martha, the white bear with no eyes who sees with her heart, absently squashed airborne inside her heavy bear arm. The quilted bear stepped forward, ready to give and receive a hug from Nancy. Dear Martha, am I mistaken, my sweet? Dear, or have you put on a few pounds? Blushing at the compliment, Martha exclaimed, I'm flattered you noticed my extra tonnage. I do what needs to be done to keep my figure at its fullest. Do you have just one suitcase, Jane Marie asked? I like to travel light. I, she paused and did so everyone else as they cocked their heads for a better listen. Was that a muffled, pounding sound coming from inside Nancy's suitcase? Oh no, Nancy said, fearing the worst. She crossed the great foyer where her suitcase sat. When she began to lift the lid, it was pulled from her hand by a force, pushing the case wide open. Surprise, everybody, it's me, teddy -o. The small, fur-worn bear jumped out before them, leaving behind Nancy's once iron shirts and shorts, now trampled and wrinkled where he made a comfy bed during his travels. Surprise! Teddy-o arrives! We continue. Dismissing the little fellow's reputation for mischief, mischief Jane Maria said warmly, Welcome to our home. Thanks, I know I've been missed. When Nancy glared at Teddy O, he grinned back, understanding she really wasn't angry at all. Glaring was just her way of pretending she was the boss. He would play along to make her feel good. Sorry to show up unexpectedly, Nance, but hey, I thought I would lend my expertise as a contest judge. I grow some mean dandelions in Oklahoma City. Is that a fact? Questioned Airborne, who also knew of the antics of this particular bear. 
Well, if it is an old bug boy himself, how's it going, Hoppy? The name is Airborne and it's going very well. At least it was, said the grasshopper sourly. Hey, don't get your wings in a white teddy old shot back. Got anything good to eat, Jane Marie? That sugarless chewing gum in Nancy's makeup bag freshens my bare breath, but it also gives me gas. Say, Nance, you might want to air out your clothes, you know what I mean? Thanks, I'll make a note of that, Nancy replied, shaking her head and pursing her lips at the furry troublemaker. As everyone ate critter crunchies and drank berry juice, berry juice, get it, Nancy and Jane Marie thanked Teddy O for volunteering as a judge, but explained the sniff-off judges had already been chosen. Teddy O seemed to understand, and once he cleaned his plate, he reached over and took the last of Martha's goodies from her plate. His cheeks full, he jumped down and wandered off. Better go after him, Martha Bear, Nancy told her. We need to keep Teddy O busy. I thought I gave him enough to do back home. Seems to me I'd rather be with you than without you, Nancy. Lucky me, she smiled. You looking for me, cutie? Teddy O called out to Martha when she entered the spare room. Martha Bear ignored his forward greeting to find the dressing drawers and the armoire and closet doors all flung wide open. Just looking for the best pace to prop my pads for the night, Teddy O enlightened them. Airborne looked confused. For any bugs in the crowd, that means the best place to sleep. Teddy O settled into the armoire on the antique quilts. Yep, this will do me just fine. Martha heard the grandfather clock strike, reminding her the contest would begin in 30 minutes. We could use your help, Teddy O. See, I told you you'd need me. We need the joggling board in the back of the garden, the cement chair bench in the top of the courtyard wall wiped down one last time for those attending who may want to rest. If you could do that, it would be most helpful. Sure thing, Martha Bear, I'll have it done in a jiffy. No need to hurry any, take your time. Please take your time. With Teddy O'Gon, Jane Marie, Nancy, and Martha, were able to greet old friends and meet the new ones as they arrived. Animals and humans filled the flower garden in a grand hubbub of socializing. Sun umbrellas protected many of the ladies in their finest frocks as they and their partners trod the red and yellow serpentine brick path through the Jane Marie's garden, which offered the best spots for observing the various species of flowers cultivated there. Everyone, everyone, please, Jane Marie called. As many as would fit crowded into the screened-in veranda with the overflow watching from beneath the shade of the lavender and white crepe myrtle trees. If I might have your attention, I am all done, Martha, Teddy O hollered as he pushed and shoved his way from the back of the property through the assembly. I thought you'd kept a better yard than this. I wiped down the top of the wall and just tell it how nasty this rag is. It's plumb filthy. He held it fire for the, high for the entire crowd to check out. Jane Marie could see Martha's humiliation and tried to make the best of the situation. This is Teddy O, our visiting caretaker extraordinaire from Oklahoma City. Would everyone please make him welcome? Those present grumbled a greeting for they didn't appreciate this intruder's embarrassing their very favorite bear, Martha. Thank you. And now, if our judges would please step forward as they call your name. Mr. Coco Cabano, Applehead Chihuahua, there in the purple and orange striped sweater. Head of May Hopper, close friend of our own Airborne. Airborne winked at his girlfriend. And finally, Mr. Wink E. Bear of Teddy Cares Grocery. Martha's recent date to the Sing Spring, Spring Sing, dropped his ball cap in her direction a motion not missed by Teddy O. One by one, the judges picked up the numbered glass jars and vases that each one held a single stem. The audience watched the faces of the adjudicators looking for clues as to which roses were their favorites. They all nodded as Winky Bear pulled out a magnifying glass and examined Blossom for uninvited pests. When the judges handed their scorecards to Jane Marie and Nancy, the sisters began tallying the results while spectators speculated on the judge's choices. Jane Marie hushed the excited crowd. 
I am proud to announce the winner of this year's Great Amelia Sniff Off is none other than, and pardon me, I need to quit me with a solo. Mmm, a tasty refreshment. It is none other than Georgiana Moonglow, the pretty chameleon who lives in Pine Tree Place with her husband Gus and her three Liz kids, Muss, Fuss, and Russ. Thunderous applause exploded as Georgiana leapt from the screen dead veranda floor to the table. Being extra careful, no one stepped on her tail and pulled it off. Cameras whirled and flashed as the lizard changed from brown to bright green and accepted the large conch shell trophy with pride. Winky Bear took note of a disappointed Martha Bear. I'm sorry, Martha. I just had to vote for Georgiana's flyer. You can see I had no choice. Martha Bear smiled bravely. Of course you had no choice. But I can't imagine why my flower is wilted when I was so careful with it. The wilted flower. It's my fault, Martha Martha Bear, explained Teddy O. Jane Marie overhood. Perhaps should we discuss this matter in private? No, ma'am, he replied. I did wrong. I'd like to explain. He climbed onto the table to stand and deliver the following. Ladies and gents, may I have your attention? Nancy leaned over to her sister and whispered, This ought to be good. All ears tuned to the small bear from Oklahoma. My plan all along was to help Martha win this contest. So before I left the Midwest, I purchased a can of rose-flavored air freshener. I figured a little good smelly on Martha's flyer would enhance her chances of winning. The collective gasps of shock and disgust were audible clear downtown at the marina, which lay westward across two and a half mile width of Amelia Island. I realize now that although fertilizer is permitted during the growing process, the application of artificial perfumes once the flower is severed from the mother plant is illegal. I want to make it completely clear that Martha Bear had no knowledge whatsoever of my action in this matter. I apologize for having dishonored Martha Bear's botanical expertise. Martha, Jane Marie, and Nancy weren't certain what to say, while Georgiana and many others just asked, Huh? Airborne clarified, He means he cheated and got caught. Winky Bear was highly irritated that Teddy O had set up a situation which could have besmirched Martha Bear's reputation. Ever the gentle Berry climbed onto the rim of their caracotta pot that held Jane Marie's avocado plant, grown from seed. Grabbing hold of its stock to balance himself, he spoke. Friends, neighbors, country bears, lend me your attention. We have come not to bury Teddy O, but we cannot condone his actions either. His deception at our time-honored Great Namibian Sniff-Off Contest is a shameful thing. Heads everywhere nodded in agreement. However, I must add that his shame has been greatly diluted because he has bravely advanced to admit his wrongdoing. While we can't applaud him for his mischievous act, we can applaud him for his courage in telling the truth. Who's with me? Nancy was the first to applaud. She remembered his past. A poor little abandoned bear found in Belgium in the rain by her husband and brought to Oklahoma long ago. Others joined her applause, including the courteous winner herself. Jane Marie picked up Winky Bear and kissed his cheek thanking him for his kind words. Nancy picked up Teddy O and held him high. Her scowl turned upside down into a smile as she gave him the best hug she could. Not a bad hug, Nancy, for a human, Teddy assessed. I'll let you hug me any time you like, but nothing can match a real bear hug. Isn't that right, Martha? And he winked at his favorite bear. As mammals, insects, reptiles, and humans disperse, towards their respective home, Teddy O could be heard saying, Okay, so when's next year's contest? I need to mark my calendar. The end for now.